You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. When you hear the words abundance, liberated, successful, these are all things that we probably really want to feel in our business. And today we're diving into the topic around how you can intersect energy and energetics in your business with strategy and structure and all the things that are required absolutely 100% for success in business. How do we combine these two things so that we have a business that is growing and feeling like it's so pleasurable to run? You really feel liberated and free and excited about it. So stay tuned because this episode is an absolute winner and it's coming right up. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne, and in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. Today, I'm joined by my very special guest, Jenna Faye Madden. She is a soul evolution guide, a new earth architect, and a seven-figure leadership and business mentor for conscious female entrepreneurs. She's the CEO of Soul Meet Strategy, um, where she guides feminine leaders to ascend onto their highest timeline, embody their full magic, and scale their soul business sustainably. She has a podcast, which is Soul Meet Strategy. Uh, She's a best-selling author, speaker, and community cultivator, known for her impactful brand and movement for conscious women around the world. So I know you're going to love this episode with Jenna. She has an absolutely beautiful way of describing some of what may have been sounding like it's going to be pretty woo-woo um, in that introduction, but she just makes it so tangible and so practical that it is really easy to understand, understand for any of us who maybe aren't as versed as she is in the world of energy and spirituality and how that actually combines into business and strategy and all of those things that feel so much more logical and practical. So Jenna is going to talk to us about how she inspires women to create more abundance and reach unprecedented levels of self-liberation, soul expression and success in business and how you can do that too. So without further ado, let me play the interview for you. All right, I'm here with Janet Faye Madden, um, who is the CEO of Soul Meat Strategy. Thank you so much for joining me today, Jenna. I'm really excited to have this chat with you. Thanks, Jessica. I'm so happy to be here. And selfishly, I just, I love chatting with Aussies. I love getting to hear your <laughs> accent. So this is going to be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting you to really think about it when you <laughs> when we're talking, because it's probably <laughs> got to concentrate to, to understand. <laughs> um, but that's amazing. Whereabouts are you from? Like, tell us a bit about you, where you live, um, what you do in your business and, you know, who you help. Um, that would be Absolutely. great. Okay, I would love to. Well, where I'm from is from Canada. um, And I am here right now, although sometimes I don't know how to answer where I live, because I've been doing the whole digital nomad travel thing for the last six and a half years. So right now I'm visiting Canada. Um, I've lived in Nicaragua, Australia, New Zealand, Bali, all over the place. And right now I'm preparing at the time of us recording this to head down to Mexico. So I'm going to be driving across mm-hmm. the US and down into the middle of Mexico in the next couple of weeks here. So that that's where I am. Amazing. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of business and what I'm up to and in, in that side mm-hmm. of things, I run a business and a brand called Soul meet strategy. So I essentially am an energetic business strategist where I love to weave both sides of the world together. So like the grounded side of things of the practical, tactical, the masculine within business, but also the more 
woo woo, the more cosmic, the more feminine side of things as well. So really serving other conscious entrepreneurs and leaders, mostly women who are in the coaching, healing, therapy, author kind of service based space to really Mm. rise up both within themselves, but also within their business. So I've been blessed to get to work with a lot of incredible women in the world on their business, but also themselves as well. Oh, that's amazing. So for anyone who's sort of new to this whole energetics um, piece, I think we kind of at a basic level probably get a bit about masculine and feminine. Um, But can you dive into this for us in a lot more detail? Like what does that really mean? And what do you mean when you're like a business strategist where you're working with something like energetics, which just feels so intangible. <laughs> so I'm like, I know that that's a massive question. That's probably like the entire episode, right? <laughs> so <laughs> how do we, <laughs> how do we uh, understand the energy, the spirituality and, and actually apply this in business, I think is what we're going to cover. So if you want to start off with the basics for anyone who's like, okay, I've got no idea what we're talking about, what that even means. Um, let's start off with that whole piece of around masculine, feminine, what cool. are you yes. talking about there? <laughs> I, I think this is totally great, especially because, I mean, even for those who this is something that they're used to and living and breathing themselves. I, I'm a huge advocate that the more we go back to basics, the better, <laughs> you know, the more we just go into the foundations of things, the more we hear new things in different ways. So, you know, if you're listening to this, whether you're new or seasoned to the woo, um, I'll just do a quick high level overview of at least my perception, which, yeah, as an energetic business strategist on the practical level, I mean, this is, and this is kind of the masculine, this is where I see me and just within the industry, you know, I'm sitting down with clients, we're looking at their launch strategy, we're looking at their offers, we're looking at their structure, we're looking at like, how are you actually growing the business? And like, what actions need to happen? What gaps are here for us to fill in for you to you know, actually have a business that feels simple, but is also effective for growing to six, multi six, seven figures in the Mm. business. To me, it's like the practical, tangible kind of stuff. And then I feel very comfortable with that. It's like, that's probably like, well, that's, you know, uh, I think where we probably it makes sense. And we've grown up with, or, you know, maybe we've learned over time or at uni and, and whatever jobs that we had, that exactly. all makes a lot of sense. We're like, okay, yeah, we need to have a bit of structure and sort of see are these pieces fitting together? Is it going to work to give us the outcome? It's sort of very kind of logical, like doing a puzzle. Like, can we actually fit these pieces together and does it make a, a whole picture or are there pieces that are not fitting? <laughs> then we need to yes. change them, right? So that to me, I'm like, yep, totally got that. That all makes <laughs> a lot of sense. So that's what we kind of call a masculine. Yes, I would say. And I mean, there's such a spectrum mm-hmm. to that. I mean, to me, masculine also can have the qualities of like the presence that we bring forth. You know, how much are we actually like trusting ourselves? How are we mm-hmm. showing up in our leadership? Like there's a lot of like really, I feel like powerful masculine energy traits that we can bring in. And then there's mm-hmm. obviously like the not so healthy. I feel like the masculine is often, especially as women, where we like burn out and there's that hustle culture, there's yes. the kind of marketing stuff. And we're like, ick, that doesn't feel good. So I feel like some of no. us that I've been there, I like really severely burnt out a number of years ago in my business. Cause I was just, I kind of took what I knew from corporate and then just kind of tried to translate it into the coaching industry and realize oh. some of it translated, but a lot of it, I was like, wait, isn't this why I left my job in the first place? <laughs> like, yeah. like, spaciousness and ease and flow. And so initially in my business, I kind of just completely rejected all of that and was like, I'm just going to do things intuitively and I'm just not going to have structure and I'm just going to do it my way. And I kind of realized that got me to a point, but everything actually felt like kind of chaotic. It felt really unsafe, really, in a sense. And so I feel like this for the feminine, you know, that can be the more distorted feminine energy and the, the energetics within our business, but it also can be our creativity. And I think that's one of the biggest sides of the more Mm. woo woo feminine side of things that sometimes we like overlook and forget about especially in this industry to actually innovate and create and like bring our brilliance and our magnetism and our essence as women into what we're really creating Mm. actually be magnetic kind of play 
with that energy, especially because I find business is a heck of a lot like dating. So, I mean, if we're like emotionally unavailable men, I'm like, well, that doesn't really make our clients want to work with us. But also if we're like really clingy and needy, I'm like, that doesn't work either. So yeah. I feel like that's the, the, the desperation I love what you're talking about here I'd love to kind of I guess before we get into like really diving into the feminine side um just talk a bit about it because I was you know I think that I'm very aligned with you and how I'm thinking about business and feeling and did the same thing like I came out of corporate I was in there for 20 years and it's like it's a place where everything is so structured, it's very driven and, you know, pretty much mostly men are the leaders and the people who've been building businesses in the world for so long. So it is a very masculine sort of led space and place in the way that we do business, even with like, well, I was in marketing, so we'd sit in the boardroom and go, who are the competition? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? How can we target them? It was like warfare, literally, like, <laughs> but for business, you know, it's like you're going out and trying to, you know, be in combat against these competitors. But that was how things were taught. And, you know, I came out of it and it took a while, I think, before I started looking, thinking, well, that is just mental. Like, why does it even need to be like that? Like, we don't need to do business that way. And, you know, I have completely different views and ways of doing it now. But, you know, this whole hustle culture, um, again, I feel really strongly about. And I, I wanted to sort of dive into, you know, this because I think that there's so much out there on the Internet about the hustle. You know, I I was actually researching for hashtags that were like, less hustle, no hustle. I like to use um, less work, more life. That's probably one of my main mm -hmm. ones I love, um, you know, and there are a few, but then I went, actually, I'll just see what, if I just type hustle, what's coming up. And they were all like, no hustle, no profit, no hustle, no gain, no hustle, this, that, like there were so many of them. And I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Like there's all these hashtags oh, all God. about you have to hustle to get somewhere. And there's this I think it kind of feeds this like panic state in you, right? That's like, oh, I've got to be doing more. And like, if I'm not getting there, it's because I'm not doing enough. And, then, ah, and, and this energy that I really find very unhealthy. Um, so I'd, I'd love you to cut, sort of talk a bit about, about this. And, you know, if there are men listening, I know we've got a podcast for women, they're probably mostly women, but help us understand you know, why some of this stuff is maybe feeling hard, why when we're trying to follow what we think is the right thing, why it may not be working so well for us um, and how it's different for men and women potentially as well. Um, because I think it's a really interesting conversation. I'd love you to break down any myths that we might have around it. Like, is it a men and women thing or is it more that we've all got masculine and feminine energy um, and tuning into it, how we feel differently about it? Because Sorry, I've asked you so many questions there, but <laughs> I'm, like, I'm cataloging them in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny because I look at someone like my husband and like for him, it's like, you know, like let's just get it and do these things. And for him, it would be fine to be doing the, the same tasks and getting a, you know, like, well, I know I just need to do them and I'll get a result. Whereas for me, it's like, oh, that just seems so non-leveraged. I want to do something once and have it you know grow and evolve and flow from there so we have a very different approach and we are male and female does that always work that way or is it not that way um I just yeah I want to dive into that hustle thing I want to really kind of remove some of the myths around it because you've grown your business to seven figures you're sitting here telling me you know there's so much involved with energetics and flow and and how to make it really work for you um I'm guessing that you, you know, you learned from that hustle thing and you changed. So yeah, can yeah. we dive into that? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would say, okay, first thing is, you know, is it like a gender specific thing? And I would say yes and no, because I do, I feel like we all have masculine feminine energetics within us. It's like that yin yang polarity duality within us all. And mm. I'll say typically, statistically, you know, most women are more feminine oriented and most men are more masculine oriented. And of course, there's a thousand and one exceptions to that. And there's times I feel like even just within our own life where we go through seasons mm. where we're 
you know, required or whether it's for good or for survival. But either way, I feel like we go through times where we're like more dominant in one energy than yeah. another. But I feel mm-hmm. like we all have a core essence. And, you know, some of us are like very clearly more feminine I'm sure you've like met women who are like a total girly girl or men who are like a true like alpha male you know and they have very strong qualities and I think mm-hmm. a lot of us are, like somewhere more in the middle like I I think for me you know and this changes throughout my life but I'm like you know I'm probably like 55 percent feminine and like 45 percent masculine like I I really play with both of them yeah and you know, I talk to some women where it's like such a different ratio or men where it's a big different ratio. And and I think the mm-hmm. way we can all kind of tune into that, because it is unique to us all is, is to get clear on the core essence, which basically to me answers the question, if we tune into ourselves, would we prefer if we really had to pick one of two things, would we prefer to feel cherished and loved and like received and appreciated? Or would we like to feel like we're driven and on purpose and on our edge and respected and I feel like like it's it's those subtle Mm -hmm. energetics where Mm -hmm. if someone's like oh being respected is more important to me than being cherished I'm like okay maybe you might be slightly more masculine than feminine and that that doesn't have to be gender specific so let me know if that makes sense but that's kind of how I think of it in my head just to differentiate between the two yeah yeah that's making a lot of sense like I think I definitely relate to you know some of the masculine traits and ways of thinking and you know maybe I've been brought up to to do that so it's very sort of normal and comfortable and and definitely as well the feminine and I I wonder you know is it about times in your life you know I have two children you know so about 10 years ago there would have been a lot of changes going on um, within me and I think that that whole intuition and that side of it has really opened up that I can kind of look back and see in the last 10 years, like I'm so much more aware of myself. I'm so much more aware of the undercurrents and the things that aren't being said, you know, what's sort of behind things that I feel that are, you know, sort of like my feminine power really coming into it. So it's interesting. Like if you ask me that question, which one would I relate more to? I'm like, Oh gosh, like I like the sound of both. If I had to choose one, initially I thought I would choose the feminine just slightly over the masculine, but I'd be like, oh, but I want that too. (laughs) So yeah, I'm very, I think I'm very central like you. I'm like, I'm probably really close to being a 50-50 mix of the two. Mm. You know, I think a lot of us are, and you know, I I think that for many of us, not all, but I think many of us, it's, it's probably coming into a close realm of like the healthiest expression for many of us. Cause I think there's so many layers to this and you kind of illuminated that where I feel like a lot of us have, you know, trauma, we have programming, we have experiences, all of these things that have kind of put all these layers of the onion on, so to speak, that a lot of the time it's like, well, am I actually truly like this? Or have I learned to be like this? And that was a big part for me when I was more, in my masculine energy, like kind of too much was, and the burnout and the hustle culture, because I just didn't really know different. Mm. And it was you know, taught throughout the school system, then it was taught in university, then it was taught in corporate, that even when I really branched into entrepreneurship, it was mm-hmm. still, you know, this was 10 years ago, it was like boss, babe, hustle <laughs> cultures. And I was like, okay, great. And so I just went with that, that eventually I hit this point where I thought, mm, this doesn't feel very good. Like it doesn't feel very sustainable. I'm actually kind of exhausted and not really that fulfilled. And that's something else I've noticed with feminine masculine energy is feminine energy. I feel like we're more maybe slightly oriented to like experiences mm-hmm. versus masculine is a little bit more oriented to kind of like purpose where we get, I, I like both, but I do find when I think about, you know, running my programs or traveling mm-hmm. clients, you know, it's like community and connections and experiences yes. versus I find for the masculine, it's kind of more of like stretching themselves and like being on their edge, you know, like if my husband yeah. and I go an adventure I'm like oh I want to see this and experience that and then maybe relax here and he's like I'm gonna hike these three mountains in one day it's like the result isn't it like they're like yeah. really driven by a result and get such a buzz from it and we're kind of really uh get a buzz from having an experience or an engagement like I was just thinking as you was talking 
um, you know, getting on a, a coaching call with my group, you know, I'm like, I get off it and I'm just like on such a high, I'm grinning. I had such a buzz because that sort of interaction and sort of seeing people and how they're, you know, they've had a moment where they're like, oh, I'm just feeling so good and so clear. And it's like, yay, you know, that feeling that is fulfillment. That is actually more than, you know, going, wow, you know, making sales or whatever is going on. I'm like, I love that people are coming in, but I actually like the real emotion is there when, you know, we're experiencing it together as opposed to making the sale. And I think that, you know, I'm assuming the masculine, more driven people would be like, bang, the sale, like I'm seeing this coming into the bank and it's like a number thing and and it's much more tangible. Um, so, yeah, I really relate to that. That's really- Yeah. Mm. I, and, that's, you know, and you brought up before you mentioned something about kind of men and women. And there was something you said that it made me think as well about just that we do have different operating systems that, you know, like in, in the feminine, we have these like energy waves. And I talk to clients a lot and they're like, oh, you know, like one or two weeks out of the month, I'm so creative and I'm like doing things. And then I feel so terrible because then I have a week where I don't really want to do anything. And like, what's wrong with me? Am I just self-sabotaging? And I'm like, well, maybe. And, you know, we really do have a lot of different energy throughout the month. And Mm. so for me, like learning to really pay attention and play with that to the point where I kind of plan my content around that, my launches around that, my client calls around that to some level, because we're not the same every day as women versus men operate on a biological 24 hour clock. So it's like each day is kind of a fresh slate for them on a biological level as well, which I think kind of feeds into that like results oriented versus experience oriented system, if that makes sense. Mm, That just makes so much sense. So tell me a bit more, like, is there anything more that you wanted to share about the feminine? Because we we talked about the masculine, we've talked about the hustle culture. um, And, you know, I think that for me, I'm just thinking, have we really dived into why it can feel harder for women like this hustle hard. I think you've just explained that pretty well. You know, it's because we're not built to have exactly the same energy every day like like men do. But I think that as well, you know, the fulfillment thing, that's something that really I was like, yes, exactly, fulfillment. I actually use that, you know, when I'm talking about my programs, I'm like, you know, it's like that's a ripple effect, right, of getting your marketing, getting your business strategy that's actually working for you, working with the right clients. It's like it's not just about the money in the bank or, the, you know, that sort of impact. It's actually about your personal fulfillment. It's also so much about the life and the experience that you're having today while you're running your business. So it feels so relatable, I think, in that way as to why it is so important to be thinking you know, not just like, well, just tell me what to do and I'll go and do it. It's like, yeah, but what's going to be the right way that works for you? Um, so I think we're now moving into more of like that that sort of feminine driven strategy. So do you want to dive into a bit of what does that actually mean, like the feminine side? I would love to, because I do feel like it's such an important piece of success for us as women. And, and to me, some of the keywords that come up is creativity expression and also intuition because what I see happen and you probably do as well in this industry is is a lot of women I know I was in this myself where it was just like just tell me what to do you know what strategy to do this to do that and it, mm-hmm. it was a lot of that masculine energy and I feel like it, it was really a side effect of not truly trusting myself and I see this happen a lot in business for women as well, where they're not really saying what they want to say. And then they get kind of bored or things feel really overwhelming. And to actually have that simplicity, I feel like can actually come from partly the masculine structure of having some things set in place, but it's also the feminine of establishing some level of like a rhythm for ourselves as well, where we're not rebelling from masculine energy, but we're actually creating space to be creative, you know, and it's not about crossing things off our to do list, per se, it's more of, hey, you know, I've got two hours blocked off, because I'm going to create content, but actually having some flexibility within that, of what that feels like, or, you know, or to actual take time to like integrate and process and feel things and just not be too much just on electronics, just doing, doing, doing like in the business. To me, the feminine is often like for 
the business in a sense where we're like visioning, we're planning, which again, a lot of this can intersect with the masculine, but it, it's this more intuitive led expressed creative kind of process, you know, say coming up with a new offer that could be a masculine approach, but it could also be really feminine, you know, where we get this idea and we're like, Oh, this would be so great. You know, and maybe it sparks because we have a yeah. call with a client and we're like, Oh my God, that would be an amazing experience. You know, and we're just like really in our heart and creating and it feels fun. It's not like we're sitting down with a spreadsheet being like, okay, well, my coach said I should probably do this thing. And now we're doing it. And it feels kind of contracting. Like the feminine to me is this like really open energy. And I also think it's kind of what I would call our capacity as well in terms of Mm. I'll put it in, you know, whether we're talking money of like receiving money or Mm -hmm. even clients, because I feel like a lot of us have these underlying fears of like, what if I burn out? What if they abandon Mm. me? What if it's too much? What if I can't handle it? What if, you know, people expect more of me because of X, Y, and Z. And so I feel like our feminine mastery and leadership is actually being able to like guide ourselves through that. So we feel safe to double the amount of clients or money or, you know, whatever it is that we want to work with. And that doesn't always come from like a masculine intellectual, you know, logic based kind of Mm -hmm. thing. It's more of a feeling based process I find just as much. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so true. It's like if you're not feeling ready um, for more, if you're feeling like you're at capacity, then you're going out there to try to get more. What do you think is going to happen? Like yeah. you, you're actually like almost repelling just because you're in in yourself, not feeling like you're ready or or have capacity to take on anymore. So, I think that it's so interesting. Like none of this was in any kind of training I did in marketing or business. I studied that at university back in like the late nineties, <laughs> showing my age. Um, and, <laughs> you know, it's so interesting because I just see it as being, there's so much in this and what's really hard, I think for a lot of us who haven't, you know, we're still new into kind of hearing about it is like, it's so un- intangible. But the thing is that the results or the outcomes can be so clear and evident. Um, You know, when you were talking a moment ago about creating an offer, like that can be really masculine, but it's so interesting because something like pricing. So I love Mm -hmm. to kind of really rock the boat with with my clients. We're talking about pricing and they'll often be like, right, well, I'm going out to research what everyone else is doing and they've got a spreadsheet and they've figured out how much they think their time is worth and they're calculating it. They are spending hours and hours and hours trying to come up with what they think is the right price based on data, based on all of this external stimulus, right? And I sit there and say to them, okay, that's great. Like put that aside for a minute and just tell me what you feel is a really great price that you would be excited about, really comfortable with, like absolutely confident to sell it for that amount. And maybe, you know, a little bit excited because it might feel a little bit of a stretch, but what would that be? Just forget about all the research. Just tell me. And it's so interesting because they'll know a number. It'll be there. Like it's like, bang, it's this number. And then they'll start being like, oh, but I don't know, like because of all these other external things. And I have found with the women that I've coached for sure, you know, and even with some of the men as well, like actually just using that would be the feminine intuition, right? So, you know, just getting them to kind of think of what is the right price for them. It it then is like, wow, this just flows and it works and it's so amazingly easy. And they haven't had to spend all these hours like trying to figure yeah. it out with a spreadsheet. I'm like, beautiful. How much easier is that? Like, <laughs> Let's do more. It makes, of this. It, it makes me think of like when someone say writing a post, like a marketing post. Most people are quite masculine or feminine. Like it's one or the other. I find, and either people are really in their head and they're like, okay, you know, I'm gonna write it like this person, or here's this formula, and I gotta say this, this, and this for a good post. Or people are just using it like a journal entry where they just aren't even really making it businessy at all like they're just like blah 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 blah, and it's just this like thought stream and they post it and this is where I'm like well let's let's play with the energies here because it, it should and it could be really channeled as I like to say where it's just this creative 
idea, you know, where we trust like the yeah. right person is going to hear the right message and we're sharing mm. it at the right time. So we're not overthinking it. Mm. And it's like, then we just bring in a little masculine, you know, too, and be like, okay, is this actually speaking to the right person? Oh, should I maybe add in like a call to action on this before I hit post? And I'm like, you know, we, I just love when we can play with these things. So it doesn't feel like rigid and robotic, especially in this mm. day and age where I'm like, th those are not the content pieces that really grasp people's attention anyways because they like want to feel our humanity and our intimacy and our journey and our story but also you know we can still be strategic with what we're doing as well yeah I love that I actually would love to dive into this a bit because a few things that you've said I was like yes this is something I think can have such a difference for people with content creation specifically because what I see out there, there's so many kind of like, well, here's a way that you can like plan out your content and, you know, you create your pillars and do this and that. And then here's a structure and everyone's sort of like, oh, it's also crazy. I want all this structure, but then they're still finding it hard. Right. And so, you know, one of the things is like looking, well, what if like you were mentioning, you could kind of create more in flow. Like, so, you know, using some structure to help you not feel like it's just completely um I mean that can be harder than anything else because you might be like if there's nothing there like what am I even going to talk about or post about and it, it's all over the place and you might not be very consistent so you you want to have some structure there but then it's like leveraging this sort of feminine flow and intuition into that do you want to talk a little bit about what that might look like with content specifically so that we can really leverage that intuition and flow and actually make the content creation easier. Like, so maybe we're removing a little bit of the rules on ourselves and are feeling really boxed in um, to help it flow out because, yeah, I think that would be so powerful to, to yes. dive into. Yeah. I feel cool. like I could speak on this all day and I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to read on this. And so I don't forget if anyone's listening, I have a really great free bundle called expressed af which is full of amazing resources it's basically a mini course in itself but in there there are some really great content prompts there are some little audio trainings and just things to like really find the flow and the rhythm in content creation so that is something that i'm sure we'll link below which is a really good resource amazing. for everyone but my my take on this is I, I love the word guidelines. This is kind of how I think of it because mm -hmm. sometimes we're like so rigid, you know, we've got these like little content plans and stuff. And I don't know about you, but I find for me, like they're great in theory, but they get kind of boring or overwhelming <laughs> at some point and it doesn't <laughs> feel creative at, at a certain point. So mm -hmm. what I've found works best for me, but also I've seen this for a lot of my clients, you know, of all walks of life and different styles of creating is what I call guidelines. And these can shift, they can evolve, but instead of having like rigid rules that are maybe unsustainable of like, I'm going to post every day and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I feel like if we kind of meet ourselves where we're at with our current capacity of what is something we can commit to that also gives us a lot of flexibility so commitments might be like well i'm committed in my guidelines like it's a guideline i'm going to send at least one email per week and i'm going to post at least three times per week but we're mm -hmm. not making it super over planned with exactly what the post is going to be and all of that so i find having kind of a guideline is good yeah. and then also having especially for anyone who like for me I don't really think of this at this point it just naturally kind of happens but anyone who's like a little newer in business and they're second guessing like what should I post about and you know is it relevant I find it works to pick your kind of five themes like three to five themes when you mm -hmm. think about what do you actually do with your real life clients and then turn those into themes you know for me it yeah. would be it would be masculine feminine and like the energetics it would be masterful facilitation it would be marketing it would be sales and you know it's like all of the content i make at this point is somehow relating to these various things so i feel like if we all have general clarity what are these themes we have some guidelines that way we're not just sitting at an empty screen when we're going to create content and i know every person's different like at this point content just like flows out of me it like 
comes out of my skin. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, <laughs> totally. I like used to not know what to say and it just came with practice. And now I'm like, you know, all the time I have to kind of control myself. I'm like, Oh, I have an idea. Like I have to, I have to write it down because there's so many ideas, but I think it all has also come from experience too. You know, the more we work mm. with our clients, the more, you know, we're just living our values, the more we get exposure to different things. Like I would say, nine times out of 10, my content is pretty much speaking. And I, I, this is a mindset kind of belief thing that I think will help everyone is like, what if you just wrote your content as if you're writing it for your existing amazing clients, like pick your favorite clients and ask yourself, if I post this, would my current clients be like, wow, this is amazing. I love this. (laughs) Or would they be like, this is a disconnect, you know, because my clients love my free content even if I talk about the same stuff in our things together they're like oh my god I love how you said it that way oh I needed that reminder and I'm like well if I just pretend I'm like sitting down for a coffee with my favorite soul clients where you know we trust ourselves on our sessions to just what we're meant to say I'm like well what Mm -hmm. if we just treat content the same and each piece of content is just this like little special sacred message Mm -hmm. to our clients. And we're still, you know, we're being strategic. Like we're, we're, we realize like, it's not just for our, so we should still have invitations for not clients. (laughs) It's like that that food of essence, I guess, is where I'm going with that. I love that because there's kind of three things in that. First of all, you are on theme because if you're talking to your existing clients you're talking to them about what you actually do right so it's really easy to stay on theme and not to be suddenly off on like oh I read something on the feed the other day which I thought was really cool maybe I should write something about that it's like well you can do that but you you know you're just really confusing your message and what you're all about if you're just all over the place and and just sort of being um fed by whatever you're reading and consuming. So if you're talking to your clients, kind of makes you really relevant and on theme, which is great and removes the judgment fear, right? Which is, you know, you're like, well, I'm sitting here with a coffee talking to my existing clients. And that's sort of the the zone that you're putting yourself in. I was like, that's beautiful because you're not worried about what they're going to think. These people have signed up and paid you for what you're doing. And, you know, think about the difference that you have when you're in that capacity versus, you know, when you're sitting there thinking, I've got to write something for the, for the world out there, for the audience. And, you know, you kind of subconsciously, I think there's so much more that comes into it with like, well, what I'm, I better say it the right way or the fear of judgment or what if they don't like that or don't agree. And, and when you're talking to clients, that would be just gone. Like you would be so much more confident in what you're saying and presenting. Um, So I just, I love it. I think. And the other thing actually that came up for me was, you know, like when you're doing that, you're probably really speaking from the heart. You're not overthinking it. And, you know, that's something that I've noticed because I used to be more of like the overthinking type. Well, let's just say I always still overthink, but I've got really good at noticing it and and managing it. And when it's coming from the heart, when you're actually just saying something that you really mean, like it can just flow so much easier. And it also comes through in your content, right? You can kind of feel it when someone's speaking with that sort of energy. And that's probably for me, what I've noticed uh, a huge difference in where they, you're trying to put too much structure in and, you, and you've got like, well, I'm going to write on this topic and you're sitting there with a blank page thinking like, well, okay, what am I going to say? Uh, and it's not coming. It's like, it's because that's not really where you are right now. Like your, your attention, your energy, your flow is in a different place and you're trying to force it because that's what you wrote down on your plan. I love yeah. that you're like guidelines, like, yeah, guidelines. I'm going to talk on these things. And if, whatever is a present to you right now is what you want to talk about, write about that, do that, because that's what's going to have the most impact. So I just love that. What an amazing thing to just so simple. Think about you're talking to your existing clients and, you know, giving them what they need. I think it's so much more powerful and more stimulating and exciting than, you know, if we have those ideal client worksheet kind of things and you're like, okay, I'm speaking to women who are 40 plus who have a business. <laughs> All right, what am I going to say? You know, I'm looking at my sales page trying to get some ideas here. Like it just, it doesn't hit quite in the same way for us. Or I feel like the receiver on the other end is when we're having fun in the process. And I think that's that's kind of like the full circle thing that I've experienced is 
I mean, I, I didn't leave the corporate world to just feel like I'm a slave and employee that feels kind of like I'm living on autopilot at this like mm-hmm. life of mediocrity with like an income ceiling. I'm like, I, you know, broke free to like do something totally different. So I'm like, wait, why am I doing that within my business? And that, um, that was a really big kind of clue for me where I'm like, wait, I'm more burnt out and bored and kind of frustrated than I was when I was working for someone else. I'm like, something probably needs to change. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, I totally just think that there's so much um, freedom. And like you say, it it makes things so much easier. I think when we can step away from the kind of the firm lines and structures there, have it there so that you've got that um, confidence and and you don't have to be thinking too hard. But to I, I, I guess what was coming through underneath when you were speaking was like, you know, you said it's about trusting yourself. It's like, yeah, it's actually, yeah, you've already got it there inside you. And it's like trusting yourself to actually be, well, whatever I'm thinking right now is the right thing for me to say. And I'm going to trust myself to, to say it. And that's okay. I, I just think like, it feels almost too easy and too simple, right? <laughs> but yeah, imagine if we could all do that and <laughs> what a difference it could make. Yeah. Because I have people and they're like, how do you post sometimes three times in a day? And I will also be transparent and honest, like a lot of like half of my content, I I repurpose for sure. So I mean, there's that side of things, but also I just don't overthink it. So if I have like a little thought bomb that pops in or something I shared with clients and they're like, oh, that was gold. I'm like, great. You know, like I don't even really think about it. So it's it's easy to put up a lot of content. And so I, I do feel like we're in this weird era where it's not like we need to just endlessly pump out content. But I also do feel like the more we put up, the better and the more visible we're going to get. So it's kind of a win-win if we're feeling good and we're empowered and it's easier. Like yeah. we're going to just naturally put up more content, which is also, I think, a lot better than forcing ourselves to be like I must post every day or else I'm like well that's that's like a total fallacy anyways I mean we can have really abundantly successful businesses and not post every day but also we we can get out of our own way make it easier and some days we might post two three four times or start to stack up a little bit of a bank where the days we don't want to post or the week we don't feel like creating okay great like there's things we can we can still share yeah yeah that's so true and you know like that's just completely without that fear of judgment like well I'm just going to post that or share that because it's there and you're not kind of second guessing it you're not overthinking it you're you're just going trusting in yourself well hey they love that that means that'll be a really cool thing to share for other people as well and you're just doing it and I think that's the beauty um you know I had a moment of when you said that I was like Oh, back in the day, because I worked in marketing, so literally everything you put out publicly would go through like rounds of sign off. I worked for a bank for a few years, like the Royal Bank of Scotland, one of the biggest banking groups in the entire world. So you can imagine the level of sign off on anything that you did. It didn't matter what it was, but it was like signed off by all the different levels. So however many sets of eyes went on it and pretty much it would just get turned from probably something that was kind of, you know, started off as having some energy into something that was like, "Eh." by the end, like by all the time, all the people had looked at it. And it's like, are we doing that to ourselves? Like, especially if you've come from that environment where you're used to having everything like checked and overchecked and really thought through. And, you know, that overthinking, I think was a, was almost trained into me to be like, you know, look at it from all the different angles. Is anybody going to like have a problem with it? Do we need to put something else in there? You know, oh, and we don't need to do that anymore. It's like, it's so liberating to be in this space. I love that you, you know, like how easy is that to think, well, I shared something with a client. They loved it. Bang, there we go. I'll just pop that out. Like you can do that without even, you know, without overthinking it, without needing a perfect graphic or anything like take a photo of yourself if you want it takes two seconds on your phone right like how many ways could we make this easier I can really see the power in that yeah (laughs) Yeah, it's like it's our inner authority you know because we have all I think on some level been really conditioned to get that external approval whether Mm -hmm. from our parents or from work and it's kind of edgy I feel like to go into an industry where like we're our own 
boss. We're, we're our own authority. And a lot of us are still kind of like, I need an adult, <laughs> you know, <laughs> looking around, even though we don't want that, but it's like, we're so used to that. And I always say when we hit resistance, we do more of what we know. And so if we're kind of bumping up against our comfort, you know, we're getting more visible or we're doing more intuitive content, we're kind of breaking free and doing our own thing. It's very normal and natural, I find, that then we actually kind of sometimes recoil a little bit. And I find in this industry, you know, a lot of us, especially as women, we get into Canva, we get into our website, we get into like trying to make everything pretty and perfect, which things pretty, I don't think they're ever perfect. But I also think that sometimes we have to just like check ourselves and be like, am I having fun in Canva making things? Cause it feels <laughs> fun. Cause sometimes I'm like, that is me. And then sometimes I'm like, oh man, what am I avoiding? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. That's so funny. It's like, that's kind of like my little guilty. I'll put my hand up and say, um, you know, I will waste time in Canva doing graphic stuff because I like to do it. It's definitely not um, my zone of genius. Um, I'm okay. Like I can make some stuff that looks all right. And, you know, I'm definitely not way down the scale, but it's like, that's one of my little sneaky things where as the CEO, you know, put my CEO hat on, well, what things should I be spending my time on? Probably not in Canva. Like <laughs> I probably need to be like, you know, push that across, delegate it to the person who actually has the design skills. They'll get it done in a quarter of the amount of time that I will because I'll fluff around and I'm, I'm not as good and adept at them as them. Um, and, and yeah, just get that off the plate. But yes, it's so funny, isn't it? The things that we gravitate to, the little guilty <laughs> pleasures and fiddling around on the website and making things look nice. Um, yeah, it's those instincts, but it's just good to be aware of them, I think. So there's been so much that we've touched on today. Um, you know, I feel like we've done, gone way down a really deep well of like um, energetic spirituality in terms of masculine, feminine in business. There's so much more we could cover, but I'm conscious of not, um, you know, making people's brains explode with the amount of information that we're like talking about and just the amount of awareness that you could have, I think, by some of the things that you've mentioned today. But I wanted to go, I don't want to leave anything on the table that you haven't mentioned today that you really want. We're like, ah, oh, this would be just so good um, to include in this episode. So I'll just open that up, Jenna. What, what's there? What's come up for you? What are you presently that you'd love to share with the audience um, as to kind of help, yeah, I guess, tie I it all know. together? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I, there's two closing thoughts that kind of weave into what we've talked about. One of them, I think, honestly, it probably sparks one because it's it's a story and something I draw upon myself re regularly, but also because it happened in Australia. So I feel like it's it intersects. But I was at this leadership event. This was a while ago in Australia. This was in 2018 or 2019. And there were so many things that went on at this leadership event, like more than I can elaborate at, at the end of this session together of recording this because it, it was a multi, it was a five day event. So a lot have happened. But one of the things that happened at this event was we had to raise money for a charity in 36 hours. And there was about a hundred of us at this leadership event. And like, that was the assignment that we had to figure out, you know, we had to pick a GoFundMe, we had to pick, you know, our own thing, set it up and like create the money. And we were supposed oh. to create, I think it was 30,000 in 36 hours. Wow. <laughs> and at the end, it wasn't like, okay, now go. We were at, during this experience, we were literally getting like annihilated <laughs> in terms of ripped apart. There was all this different leadership exercise going on, like to the point where one of the things was everybody had to get naked in front of each other and share their Ooh. deepest guilts and shames. And then the <laughs> next minute I'm on the street corner in Brisbane rapping, I like big butts. Then the next minute I'm having to ask somebody if they'll buy me a coffee and get rejected. Like there was so many things going on. Like I was a hot mess and it was oh. challenging in the best, weirdest ways. So while that's happening, we basically had from like 10 p.m. when the event ended till like 7 a.m. the next day and then a bit of time the next day like there was very small window in there to do this fundraising plus for everyone to get on the same page and long story short somehow we created fifty six thousand dollars in 36 wow. hours as a group and what that showed me the whole purpose of why I share that minus the Australia connection is that <laughs> is that we can make magic in the mess like I was a hot 
mess during that week. And I was like, mm-hmm. wow, but we actually created so much. And it kind of overlaps into what my motto is that I literally, it's like, I have it on my cards. I have it on my wall. I have it everywhere. And I say it regularly, which is to hold the vision, not the circumstances. Like entrepreneurship is not Mm -hmm. easy, even if we get sold this illusion. Mm -hmm. It's not. It takes grit. It takes resilience. It takes innovation. And there's always going to be reasons that pop up of why we should burn it all down or why it isn't going to work or why we should just follow this person and do it this way. But this kind of comes back to me to like the inner authority, but also our feminine of connecting to the vision and our masculine though, to like hold the vision and not get caught up into the circumstances where it's really easy, especially in this day and age to just like spiral. (laughs) And I think we can remember, like we can have things going on in our life, in the economy and our business, and we can still create a lot through the process. So that that's what pops up for me Uh is kind of a thought. (laughs) Yeah, that is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think that's so powerful. Um, the circumstances, I think, yeah, when you said that, I was like, boom, that is 100% what happens 99% of the time when anybody's sort of feeling like they're on the plateau, not get, getting anywhere. Um, they're probably just really focused on the circumstances um, yeah. and and not holding to the vision. Yeah, we, it's a journey. It's one of those things that, you know, like being in business, I think there's this big expectation. So many people come into it thinking, oh, well, you know, look at that person. Like they went from zero to a million in whatever it was, six months or and this person, this. And that, and it's like, yeah, you're getting part of the story. You're never getting the whole story. Like that might have been their third business. It might have taken 10 years in the planning, whatever. Like, you know, it's not that they're saying something that's not true, but they are only telling you a little bit of it because it's the wow factor bit, right? And, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, I think people, especially women, especially high achieving women, like, you know, you've come out of corporate as well. Like a lot of us, we're we're professionals. We were, you know, achieved a lot in that life. And you come into business and you kind of hold yourself to these ideals and expectations and think like you need to achieve at that level. And like, what's wrong with me? I'm not able to do this in business. It's like, actually, you are doing it. You are doing, just look at what you've already done and created and, and, you know, do you even stop for a minute to appreciate or acknowledge what you've done so far and, and really think about it. Like, even though you're not where you think, thought you were going to be, let's forget about that right now and actually look at, look at what you have done in the time. Like, that's actually bloody amazing. Like you should give yourself a pat on the back. And like you say, like, be thinking, like, look, just holding on to that vision that vision and, t- you know, I, I just, I don't know, I had a weird, I think I always get imagery in my head when you said that. I was like, it's like the vision's there and it's like a rope and you're like, you're holding onto it and going along and, and forgetting about the fact that you might be hanging yeah. over a big chasm at the time because, you know, the journey's going to change the whole time. But if you're still holding on to that rope that's connecting you to the vision, you are going to get there. Like you, you just have to keep going and not stop right so I love that I think yes yeah Yeah, what a brilliant brilliant um thing just thank you for that thank you so much for everything you've shared today I feel like this has just been an absolute pleasure there's been so much in it um I've definitely learned a lot as well and had new levels of awareness I think opening up with what you've shared so I appreciate you joining us today Jenna thank you Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. (laughs) Amazing. Now I'm going to link up Jenna's um, content bundle in the show notes. Um, I'll also link her website. She has a podcast as well, um, which is Soul Meat Strategy, which um, I'm sure is absolutely amazing. So if you've enjoyed listening to her today, then I absolutely recommend that you pop over and check her podcast out as well. And, um, And where do you hang out on socials, Jenna? Where's the best place for people to connect with you? Yeah, I am a Facebook girl. So I'm mostly on Facebook, which is just my name, Jenna Faye Madden. But I'm also almost as much on Instagram as well, which is my business brand, Soul Meets Strategy. Those are the main places that I hang out. Amazing. Thank you. Well, we'll make sure that they are in the in the show notes as well. So you can go and connect with Jenna. And um, yeah, why don't you even screenshot this episode, tag us both on Instagram and, and share something that you've had a takeaway 
thought of or something that was um, you've enjoyed the most in this episode? Because we would love to hear it, wouldn't we? <laughs> yes, we would. Thank you so much for having me and everyone for listening and being here with us. Thank you. Now, if I asked you, do you know who your ideal customer is? More than likely, you're going to answer, yes, of course I do. Or at least I know enough about them to market to them. Or do you? You see, the number one reason why most audiences aren't converting into buyers, or even if you're having trouble building an audience in the first place, is simply because you haven't gone deep enough to understand who it is exactly who you're speaking to. There's no connection being made there, and therefore those people aren't taking that next step. They're not connecting with you, they're not connecting through to become your clients. It's not so much about who they are as a person, who you might see, but more what is actually going on inside their head. What are those questions running on repeat inside their minds? What is it that they're feeling so stuck and frustrated about? And really, why aren't they able to shift themselves out of that place? Now, these are just some of the amazing questions that I get you to explore inside my brand new customer avatar worksheet. I've called it the ultimate customer avatar worksheet because you will never ever have seen one like this before. It is so much about what's going on in the mind with a couple of questions just to help you get the visual profile of who it is you're speaking to as well. But clearly it is the thoughts and the way to connect to their thoughts that shifts somebody from being just a person out there in the market into being somebody who's an active fan, a member of your audience, and not only that, but also a buyer. And that takes deeper connection than what most people are prepared to do. So if you're prepared to go that additional step to get really deep and meaningful with your ideal customer, then head over to my website and download this free worksheet right now and you can get started. It's at jessicaosborne.com slash customer hyphen avatar. I've got the link for you here in the show notes so you can hop straight over there and just get it, download it and let me know how you get on. Like, how did you find this exercise that I take you through? Because I guarantee you are going to learn more than one brand new thing about your ideal customer that you never knew before. So enjoy. Good luck. I hope you love it as much as I do. 